there! Welcome to episode 86 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. This week I'm co-directed by Hat Loving Gamer, a very talented individual who will be helping me find some new secrets today in Super Mario. So with that said, let's get going. One thing I always wanted to know was what happens to the bullet bills when they leave the screen. I thought maybe they simply disappear after leaving the player's sight, but they in fact keep going to the end of the stage. There's a unique texture hidden under most bodies of lava in Bowser's castle stages. Because of the placement and detail of the texture, it's uncertain if it was originally intended to be seen. In World 1-1, interestingly under the flag outside of the view, is another flag with a different design. The flag is yellow with what looks like a Goomba on it. Because of this and the similarities with Koopa the Quick's flag in Mario 64, it's speculated that this was a similar idea in which you would race a Goomba to the flag, and the usual flag would be replaced with the one off screen once the race is initiated. An idea that could have been the basis for the Koopa the Quick race. Similarly, there's a long rainbow platform above the clouds, way past the bonus areas. Its purpose is unknown, but its appearance may have been reworked from Mario Kart's Rainbow Road. In World 1-2, looking out of the stage, there is a motionless sprite of a Goomba not seen anywhere else in the game. While this Goomba sprite serves no relevance to anything, another sprite can be found. This time in multiple locations under the view of World 6-1. The sprite resembles the Monty Moles in the later Mario games. It's most likely these would have jumped out at enemies in the level, but the mechanics were eventually scrapped for whatever reasons. As always, you can follow me on Twitter if you ever want a specific request to the game that I'm covering this week, and this time is no exception. At I'm a Kadeen asks, is there anything that prevents you from going backwards in Super Mario Brothers? Well, if we go back to where we've been, I was surprised to find out that Packy Derm from Yoshi's Story has been following you off screen the whole time, which is why the player can't go backwards. In World 2-2, if we move above the water and past the end of the level, we can see an unused Delfino Plaza with a surprising amount of detail. <laughs> what in the world? In the Bowser's Castle stage, moving the camera past Peach and past the end of the stage will reveal Bowser's pool table. And further down, a full game room. <laughs> and home cinema. There's even detail outside the castle wall showing Bowser's hot tub. And it's in a completely textured garden. And a pathway leading to a taxi which presumably would take you to this. An unused metropolis which was perhaps the basis for Mario Odyssey's New Donk City. What? <laughs> and what the heck is going on here? What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 147 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. A lot of you have been asking for this one, so here it is. Sonic 2. Rather than waste your time, let's get started. Okay, so first I want to show you what's behind the slot machines in Casino Night Zone. If we take away the front layer, we can see that all the symbols are in a line that passes when the slots are spinning which is pretty cool. Now many of you have asked about the capsules at the end of the level. 
And I think all of us want to know if there's something interesting that happens inside. And if we were to remove the layer that's covering them, yes, the critters can actually be seen sleeping while waiting to be saved. And even waking up, which is pretty amazing considering that none of this is ever seen. The animation is triggered too early, so the critters wake up before the capsule breaks open. So next up we have a viewer request and if you ever want to leave a viewer request to me before I finish an episode You can of course follow me here on Twitter But anyways people are asking if there was anything off screen before the chemical plant zone and there is Emerald Hill Zone. And in a similar fashion, people are asking about Emerald Hill Zone. And since we're already here, there is the final zone for Sonic 1. I don't even know why they would include this here. Even better than that is above every zone is an area full of tails. And if you look closely, every single time that Tails dies, another one of these takes his place. Okay, so you're probably wondering what happens to Tails at this part of the game. And no, he doesn't land on a smaller ship flown by Ray. He also doesn't get a new part given to him by Big the Cat, and Vector doesn't play the music while he fixes the plane. He doesn't have anything to do with Cream, Mighty doesn't save the day, or, uh... Now it's that time on Boundary Break where we look at birds. And for this episode, we're gonna be looking at the birds and other animals when they go off screen. In Emerald Hill Zone, they just stop running. Okay, but in Chemical Plant Zone, they run free for a little while, and then they collapse. In Aquatic Ruin Zone, they actually run pretty far until... Oh. Casino Night Zone, I couldn't seem to get, but I'm assuming by the look on this guy, uh, probably lost a lot of money. Hilltop Zone's critters play on these things. Gotta say, Oil Ocean Zone's uh, probably the most relaxed looking one out of the bunch. But what happens in Sky Chase Zone, it's just horrible. So with Pokemon Snap 2 just around the corner, I figured we could go back to the original Pokemon Snap and see what we can find out of bounds. There might have been a lot of things that I missed in the last episode, so I took a second pass and we're going to see what we can find today. Now, this episode's going to be a little bit different, because using some new tools, not only will we be able to move the camera, but the game will register our camera. So we'll be able to take pictures of all the out of bounds stuff and see what Professor Oak thinks. You were close. So first off, we're going to be looking at reflections. I've covered reflections on the N64 games before, and usually this effect is achieved by having the models replicated on the opposite side of a plane. It's not a true mirror, it's doubling up on all these models. And I was surprised to find out that Pokemon Snap does the exact same thing, especially since those reflections are so faint. And what's interesting is that by modding the game slightly to remove the water plane, the reflection models are no longer obstructed, and Professor Oak will count the reflections as extra Pokemon in the background and taking pictures of the reflection alone works too. Well done! One thing I didn't touch on last time is the Scyther grassy area. It's interesting because not only can he be seen before he's hit by a pester ball, but he's constantly teleporting to different spots in the grassy area, which explains why sometimes you miss him. Now this is pretty amazing. I was asked on Twitter what happens to Todd after the opening cutscenes. And because we were able to isolate the camera, Todd is actually still here, fixed behind the camera the whole time. And what's really cool is that you can even take a picture and the game recognizes this character model as player.obj. And the game will even give you a pretty standard score. Wonderful! Alright, I know it's common knowledge now, but honestly, I'm probably one of the few people who didn't know Pokemon Snap was built on the same engine as almost every other N64 game. And what kind of person would I be if I made this video without looking at some of the remnants from another game? And I might have found something. Amazingly, there's a texture in here that just goes completely unseen by the player. It's the same texture that's used in the opening of Super Smash Bros. I'm gonna guess that this was probably kept in to check on lighting? Either way, it's definitely worth pointing out. Oh, and the interior of Oak's hut is fully modeled. There's an R-wing hidden outside the volcano level. 
you probably already know there's an R-Wing hidden in the code of Ocarina of Time because it was used as a base for Valvagia's movement patterns. Likewise, an R-Wing can be found in Super Mario 64, even in Pokemon Stadium's Run Ratata Run. This R-Wing probably had a similar purpose and must have been a placeholder for Moltres, which explains Moltres' movement patterns. It can be coded back, but the game still registers it as Moltres. Oh. And let's take a look at the volcano. The top is covered with a lava texture, and there isn't much to see. But if we pass through the texture, there is so much happening in here. There are even Pokemon you don't see anywhere else. Is that Hades from Bomberman 64? I don't think I've ever seen this much unused content in a game before, and I can't even figure out how I missed this on the first go around. Going back to the overused engine, here's something that's pretty cool. Going past the portal at the end of the tunnel stage, and looking to the left shows a motionless Kirby model, which I'm gonna guess is from the Crystal Shards. Seriously! Though, sadly, it doesn't register, which doesn't make that much sense because if you look to the right, you can see what looks like the entire first stage of Crystal Shards, and everything is fully animated and registered. Oh my god, are you seeing this? It's Todd Satchel from the cutscenes. Something else we haven't touched on is when we see Professor Oak's lab. There's actually a lot of cropped out artwork that you don't normally see. To the right, we see a Pokeball that you or your rival never picked up. And to the left, there's even a jelly donut. Speaking of jelly donuts, there's a model of a jelly donut hidden behind some flowers in the beach stage. Oh! Wonderful! All right, well, last but not least, I've been asked a lot about the unused music track that's for a supposedly deleted course in Snap. It's old news, but if you haven't heard the track, this is it. And I'm happy to show you that the entire course can be found. It's above the river of all places.